Hey there, in today's video, we are going to be talking about how do you find the right grant to go after in the first place? So the ones that are worth your time to pursue and you have the best chance of winning them. So we're going to teach this in the context of a funding research funnel, which is a process we teach in our online course, Grant Writing From Start to Funded. Then we're gonna round things out with a tour of our very favorite grant database so you can get the hang of how to use it so you can find 100 plus grant opportunities in just a few minutes. All right, that's it, let's hit it. promised, we're going to get started by talking about buckets of funding. So there's five main buckets. You have local contributions, something that's available to you only locally in your community. Then there are state grants and loans. So depending on where you're at, maybe it's a province, right? But it's basically that kind of bigger geography, typically provided through uh, that department, a department in the state. So maybe a health department or an environmental department, right? Something like that. Then you have federal grants and loans. So these are competitive on a national scale, but they typically have a lot more funding involved, right? So competitive, but also um, just a bigger pool to pursue. Then of course there are private foundations, and those would be those also range in size from a local foundation to a regional foundation, perhaps like the Murdoch Charitable Trust in the U.S. gives in the Pacific Northwest, and then a national foundation. So you could think of the Bill and Melinda Gates, well actually they're international. So what's a national one? Um, the Kresge Foundation, that's a national foundation and then international even would be like the Bill and Melinda Gates. Then of course there's philanthropy, which I suppose that sort of um, blurs the line because sometimes they, sometimes philanthropists obviously also have foundations set up, but sometimes philanthropists aren't, don't have formal grant programs set up, but they do giving to organizations. So it's a little bit of a different process. We're gonna be focused on the grant side. So looking at state grants, local grants, federal grants, and then private foundations. Okay, so this process is very unique to us. Uh, we just basically developed this when it was really challenging to get very expensive projects funded. So this created, this basically produced a framework for deciding how do I get a project funded when it's gonna take more than one grant. So I'm going to kind of summarize how this looks in, it's sort of a funnel, right? That's how we think about it. So we start by doing grant research with Instrumental. It's a, the database that we uh, most enjoy, but it's, a, it's also very US-based and nonprofit focused. So if you're outside of the US or you're focused in a different arena, then there's other databases available to you as well. I will link in the description box below um, an evaluation we did of 10 grant databases. So shop around and have a feel for what's best for you, but this is what we like because it's very modern, clean, and easy to use. So you start by defining your project and seeing, okay, what, and go prospecting, what grants exist. And within minutes, you'll have 100 plus grant opportunities, which is awesome. It's a great problem to have because that is way too many grants to pursue. So then the second round is when you are going from 100 plus to about 20 that are worth evaluating. And then the final round is okay, you got from that 20 grants or so down to the two to five to pursue. And then you put that information into a funding strategy memo that everybody aligns to. It's a roadmap. And then that's how you know, okay, these are the grants we're pursuing over the next 12 to 18 months. So there's two approaches that you can take and I just wanna acknowledge both of that, both of those. So typically people know what they wanna get funded and so you're trying to figure out how do we get this thing funded because we know we wanna get it funded or your another strategy to consider is that you actually go and look for grants that really intrigue you that have a really good chance of winning and then you build a project or a program to fit into that grant opportunity it's an option as well okay so now after you've gone through that first filter you're going to have 100 grants and you're really doing a quick go or keep or dump decision like do we have some good fit is there some alignment here do i genuinely feel like they would fund our organization is what we wanna get funded even eligible, right? So once you've gone through that phase, you'll be clear on, you know, don't try to force it, right? It just needs to be, yeah, this actually genuinely feels good. Assuming it does, then you're down to your 20 grants or so, right? So in this phase, this is where you're gonna ask yourself basically three key questions. What are the funding agency's priorities? And you, you really want to have, like I said, don't try to force something, it needs to feel very natural. Like, yeah, we really do support their goals. Of course, you also need to confirm that what you want to get funded is eligible. For instance, if they say they will not pay for a conference, for instance, and you're trying to get that funded, then obviously stop there, discard them. 
You also want to have a look at what the funder's past giving history is, and we're going to go through this in a minute when I pull up Instrumental and show you how to use it. But this is very helpful to understand basically the best indicator of future giving is past giving, right? So having a look at who they've awarded grants to and in what amount is invaluable information. All right, so I'm not going to go into all of these details. I am definitely abbreviating this lesson. The full, full enchilada is in our main grant writing program, grant writing from start to funded, but I hope you're getting the basics so you feel comfortable with this. But now we're down to trying to figure out, okay, what, what grant is really worth that, that final selection, right? So hands down, first thing you need to do is determine the competitiveness. So what percent of applicants last year were successful? And you determine this by going, okay, how many awards divided by the number of people that applied? And you're not gonna figure out how many people applied online, rarely anyway. You're going to have to email the funder and ask them and just do a quick email, say, hey, we're looking at this program, trying to understand the competitiveness. How many applicants did you have last year, right? It's just a real quick question. If it's way below 15%, I mean, if it's below 15%, 20 preferably, oust it, focus on something else, because you're just dealing with bad odds. In this step, you're all, in this phase, you're also going to be looking at reading the funding guidelines and this time with the scruple, right? So really take your time to go through it. See if there's anything that's gonna keep you from being eligible, right? What needs to be in place to be competitive? How much work is this gonna be, right? So that's when you're being a little bit more critical and really reading through the funding guidelines. You may also consider contacting past applicants. So this information is obviously, you know, it's usually available online. So it's bold, but why not? Ask if you could get a copy of their application. Uh, see, you know, what they, how else they funded their project. Like what other funding source did they consider? Most people are really good about paying it forward and helping share this information with each other. Then you're gonna to wanna to contact the funder. And this is its own lesson unto itself. So I'm gonna skip this for now, but again, it's in the course. But for now, I think basically what you're doing in this whole phase is be, being able to evaluate like, okay, is this, is this actually a good fit? Should we be applying? Okay, so the step four is contacting the funder and you're gonna be providing a one-page overview of Project Prospectus. We provide samples for this in our course, but basically it's just this overview of who you are, what you wanna get done. And then you have, we provide a series of questions on what you wanna ask a funder, but I'm not gonna really focus on that right now because that frankly is a YouTube video unto itself. Instead, I'm gonna take this time to bebop over into instrumental and have a, give you a look at what that looks like when you're running a project through. Okay, so this is what instrumental looks like. So you drop in your name and your work address. I'm gonna hit login because we have an account. So just have to... Okay, so this is what the dashboard looks like. It's gonna give you your master tracker. I know this is a little like, whoa, but just hang with me. So what you do here is you're gonna mark, okay, how many grants have you won? What's the goal? And we're waiting to hear from, right? So this is just a test account. That's why you don't really see this thing filled out very well. But let's just go have a look at getting an animal. Well, we need to set up a new project. So let's set up a new project. You're gonna define the project name. I need something, let's see, um, food bank, let's say. So it's a nonprofit. We'll say it's also another entity could be the government entity, often they're partnered, right? Um, so that's the applicant type. We're not including any individuals and we're not looking for faith-based grants right now, I guess. I guess I could say yes. Probably could change that to yes. Okay, then you're gonna define where your project takes place. So I'm saying in the US, um, where do we wanna say this is happening? How about Washington? I went to college there. And we'll say, I went to Gonzaga, so let's go to Spokane County, see what we can get. Go Zags. Okay, now we have our region selected. And then this is where the real magic happens and this is the fields of work. So this is where you're defining um, Let's hit, just type in food. So food access and hunger, food delivery and distribution, food security, right? So these are all, let's see. Does hunger have another one? No. Um, nutrition, nutrition and healthy eating. Um, oops. Poverty alleviation, perhaps. Um, I don't know. There's, then you can, if you run out of ideas to type in, you can just hit the drop down and start cruising through these. It's just a pretty long list, so I prefer to try to type into the search box. Okay, then you've got your terms. You can have up to 10, but I recommend having between five and seven so you don't get too overwhelmed. So we're gonna leave it at that. 
and saying, would you like to see grants specifically for ag? I'm gonna say no in this situation. Now, when you're setting a minimum or a maximum, um, it is helpful to set a minimum so you're not seeing super dinky grants. Uh, I'll go set a 5K right now. Don't know who would set a maximum. That'd be weird. What will you use the funds for? So I'm gonna just go ahead and click all of these because I think it encompasses, um, sometimes you can just find things that, I just think you should click them all unless you're not, definitely not doing a capital project. Again, go into more detail on this in the course, but here's your quick and dirty version anyway. Okay, so while that's looking up grants for us, I could click onto the animal shelter and we could just go have a look at it because it's up. Okay, so the grant tracker is where the grants go that you're saving and that you're interested in pursuing. And then the matches, which is out of hand, 279 matches, so many, um, way too many. So I would need to definitely go through and edit that project description right here so that I'm getting less of these grants. But anyway, this is what it looks like. So on the right side is sort of the card about the funding source. So I would skim this real quick, see if it feels like a good fit. Um, they provide a one-time capital grant of about $150,000 for an adoption van and the associated customization costs. The only thing I'm not clear on is if they do many grants or not. Preference is given to municipal shelters. Um, must be a municipal, anyway, so you see some of the eligibility things. So let's just say this is a fit. So I'm gonna go save. And it puts it into the animal shelter project. I can change the status, like, oh, we're definitely gonna be, you know, it's planning, we're gonna go after this, or right when you're later in the process, you can hit submitted or whatever. Obviously we're in the researching phase. We don't have a submission goal, so save. Boom. Um, let's have a look at the Pause for Love Foundation. They give between a hundred and a thousand dollars. They also have a 990 report. Hooray! Let's look at that. So a 990 report is this is only relevant for those of you in the U.S., but presumably your, uh, every nation has some version of this. But this is where you figure out basically the foundation has to file with the U.S. government, the IRS, how they gave their money away, right? To con basically confirm it's always for charitable causes. So you can go ahead and click the view 990 report and this is very interesting. So their total assets are only $27,000, right? And so it's not even really registering here. Um, nor is there giving, so that's weird. No past grants between 2010 and 2018. Okay, so obviously we're gonna go, go ahead and go back here and say not interested so let's look at something a little bit bigger. Here's the Pedigree Foundation. Um, they're predicting the next deadline. Love that image, that's kind of cute. Um, but that's what it means when it's squiggly. It's uh, predicting when it's gonna be due based on past information, which is very helpful. So the grant amounts between five and $10,000. Let's go ahead and view that 990 report. I'm gonna pop it out again, a little easier to see. Okay, so view. So here I can see, this is a good sign, their total assets are 2.3 million, so it's that's a good sign. The total giving is 620,000. This is very insightful. The average grant amount is um, about 2,500, so you don't want to apply for 5,000 or 10,000 because you want to be close to that average, right? You can see who are the key people that are on the board, and so for larger grants you can be more strategic about building relationships with the board. This is also an awesome sign. The assets are growing every year, which probably correlates with their giving growing every year and the number of grants. So you can see it actually declined in 2018. Um, and if you're wondering why, why does it lag a couple years? It just does. So be patient about that. It's pretty normal that it's going to be about two years behind, but it still is insightful when you've got a couple years of data. So they gave 350 grants in 2017, 250 in 2018. Not sure why the decline. Maybe they were bigger awards. I don't know. Uh, this is my favorite feature. So you get to look at basically where the giving went. So 11 grants to Texas, 12 to Colorado, nothing to Wyoming, uh, four in Montana, 28 in California. So the bulk of their giving was in California. So let's go ahead and let's say you're in California. Well, I guess my earlier example was I was in Washington. So let's look there. Okay, so not crazy. Three grants, right? So they gave to the South Pacific County Humane Society, the Humane Society in Seattle King County, and Adopt-a-Pet. 
So you can see how much funding was given and for what purpose. So if I really wanted to be um, strategic, I could reach out to you know all three of these and ask, hey, could I get a, get some information on what it was like to apply for this funder, right? Um, and try to try to get that grant. So that is kind of a 101 on the 990. I'm gonna go back to the card. I'm gonna say I'm interested and save it. Save it to this project. Save. And now it's in my grant tracker. So now when I'm going to that next part of the funnel where I'm actually deciding, okay, do I really want to go after this Rachel Ray, save them all grants or not? Then you, um, let's say you do. Let's say we're really pumped about it. It's been archived. It's very likely out of date. Okay, well, we'll pretend it's not. And we're going to say, okay, we're going to plan on doing this. We're going to plan on applying for, you know, 40000 And our submission goal is the 18th which again, it's trying to warn me because the dates are all off, right? But I can then go done and it's all here in one dashboard. It's very dynamic. So um, I could go into more detail, but we just do that in the course. So I think this is plenty of information for now. Very cool tool. But again, don't hesitate to go look at other resources as well. Here is our website, Learn Grant Writing. So where is it? Um, resources, go down to blog. And then if you cruise down or if you use the search bar, you can find, um, where is it? Here it is, pretty new. A re our review of the top 10 grant databases. Thank you, Alexis Swenson, a grant writer that was a graduate of our program. She did this article. So anyway, you can go through that and have a look. So hope you found that useful as you start to understand, you know, what does the grant research process look like? So you can really filter that down. This is a very 101, go way deeper in the course, but be, be totally comfortable uh, putting in a comments, putting in a comment below and we can try to get those answered. Hit the like and subscribe button if you want more videos like this. We drop about one a week and that's all for now. All right, have a good one. See ya.